I'm Steve for This Up With Cars, and today I'm back with my Ford Bronco 2. Last time we fixed the front fuel pump and got the Bronco running again. When I got the Bronco, half of the master cylinder was empty of brake fluid, so today I want to take a look at the brakes and see if I can resolve the issues. But first, I need to do something about these tires. The two rear tires especially are going flat quite quickly, and I had a lot of success with tire eject on my Ranger, so that's what I'm going to put in today. This is the tire jack that I'm going to be using. This is the off-road formula. This is made for ATVs and riding tractors. This is the same stuff that I used in the Ranger. I'll have a link to this below. First thing we need to do is get our valve stem so it's not on the top. The truck is in neutral right now. Now that we have our valve stem in a position where the tire jack is going to be flowing into the tire, they give you a valve core removal tool. So just stick that in there and unscrew the valve core. This of course will let all the air out of your tire. This tire is pretty old and stiff, so I'm not going to worry about jacking it up but it might be a good idea to jack your vehicle up while you do this. Now it comes with this syringe. In order to get the fluid in there, just screw that onto the valve stem and pour in the sealant. I'm going to pour half of this in this tire and half in the other tire. If that's not enough, I'll add another half into each tire. But I had such good luck last time, hopefully this is all that it will need. I'll stick in the plunger to get the rest of it out. And unscrew it. Now I can put the valve core back in. And then just air the tire back up. Then once I have all the tires done, I need to take this for a drive and get that tire jacked, coated all around the tire. It says in the instructions, it just takes a couple minutes at a slow drive. So a couple laps around the parking lot and it should be done. Tire jack sends you with these valve caps. These are red with the, the tire jack symbol on the top. That way you can remember which tires you've already put the tire jacked into. That should be swirled around enough. In the last video, I filled the master cylinder up with brake fluid, but what you didn't see is the next day the brake fluid had leaked from this corner of the car. So let's get the Bronco up and get this wheel off. Okay, we don't even have a drum on here. The seal is coming off of the wheel cylinder up here. You can see that the shoe has been shifted up out of place up here. I think it's time to take a look at the spare parts that came with the truck. Let's take a look at what all we have back here. These are brake drums. And up here. Ooh, what's this? That's the entire hub and rotor for the front. This must be the shoes I need for back here. Okay, brand new shoes. Here's the brake pads for the front. What's this? Okay, here's the hardware for one side on the rear. I only see one of these, so I wonder if the other side has already been done. Okay, there's all the springs, more hardware for the drums. Unfortunately, there's no wheel cylinders. And also back here is an ECU. I assume it goes to this. I don't know if they put this in or 
why this is in here. And then a bunch of hoses for the air conditioning. Let's double check there isn't anything up front. Nope, the only thing up front is the missing brake drum. So it looks like I need to order wheel cylinders. Since all of the parts that are in the truck aren't really useful, what we really needed was the hydraulic parts, these cylinders in the back. Let's take a look at this cylinder and see if it's even savable. I have a couple of brake spring tools. This is the typical old school one that you've probably seen before. This is a really neat one. This one clips onto the spring and you tighten it down and you have a really good grip on the spring. And then I can take it and move it. Obviously I need to remove this one first though. Okay, here's the dust boot and the cylinder, which has fallen out. We can see the seal here and the spring. So this is why it was leaking so much brake fluid. I could just push this back in, put it all back together properly, and it might seal up. If we push this in and look in the bore of the cylinder, that doesn't look so good. So I am going to replace this brake cylinder. Now that the brake shoes are away from the wheel cylinder, I can take it off. To remove the brake cylinder, it's held in by two bolts, one here and one here. Between those two bolts is the remnants of the brake bleeder. It has become rusted and broke off when someone tried to turn it. So if your brake bleeder is still in place, you may have to remove that before removing the brake cylinder. But before you do anything, you want to start by removing the brake line from the brake cylinder. This one is pretty rusted, so I'm going to put some penetrating oil on here and I'll use some heat if I can't get this to turn. If you don't want to strip out your brake line, it's important to use a line wrench instead of an open end wrench. It's not budging, so I'm going to put some heat on it. Still not budging. I'll try some more penetrating oil. The heat should help that soak in. I'll let this sit for a bit and I'll be back. Okay, I got it to move. We'll get lit back and forth a little bit. You can see the problem now is the line is stuck to the nut. And if I just keep unscrewing it like this, it's going to twist this line up and break it. So I'll need to continue wiggling this until this line is broken from this surface and the nut there. There the line stayed in place. It's all coming out properly now. This is my ratcheting open end wrench. It's really handy for things like this. You can see it has an arrow on it that lets you know which way it's going to turn. Just like when you're using a ratchet to turn a nut that's really loose and it's just not going anywhere because it's moving back and forth. The same thing happens with this wrench. When it starts to get really loose, you need to switch to a normal wrench instead of using the ratcheting open end wrench. There we go. Now I have easy access to get to these two bolts and remove the brake cylinder. With any luck, the wheel cylinder should push in to the drum now. Here's the new wheel cylinder. You can see it has a bleeder on it this time. Installing this is just the reverse of everything I've done so far. Now I can pull out the plug and put the line back on. Now back to the other side of the drum to put the springs back on. This side is a little more difficult to deal with because I have to worry about getting this cable in the right spot.
I've been sitting there spinning this adjuster and it doesn't seem to be moving. So I might have to replace it with a new one. No, it's working just fine. So I'll put it back in. Now let's see if the drum will go on. The truck's in park right now, so I can't spin it fully, but that feels good. Now I can top off the brake fluid, bleed the brakes, and it should be back in drivable condition now. Well, that's all I have time for tonight with the Bronco 2. Really, I've only put an afternoon's worth of work into the Bronco so far. There's still a lot to go, so if you want to see more Bronco 2 videos, comment below and click subscribe.